Aston Martin DB9 from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. The Aston Martin DB9 is a two-door grand touring car produced by the British car maker Aston Martin. Produced between 2004 and 2016 and designed by Ian Callum and Henrik Fisker, the DB9 was available as both a coupe and a convertible, the latter termed the Volante. Succeeding the DB7, which Aston Martin produced from 1994 until 2004, the DB9 debuted at the Frankfurt Motor Show in 2003, while the Volante debuted at the same motor show in the subsequent year. It was produced in Gaydon, a village in Warwickshire. The DB9 is built upon Aston Martin's vertical horizontal platform, which employs extensive use of aluminium throughout the body. Aston Martin implemented several incremental updates to the DB9, termed facelifts. The first two updates, which occurred in 2008 and 2010, involved minor changes to the headlights, taillights, engine, and interior. The most noteworthy update occurred in 2012, when Aston Martin introduced a completely redesigned front fascia for the DB9. The headlights were the most significant update, which gave the car a design reminiscent of the 2011-2012 Virage. The company's racing division, Aston Martin Racing, adapted the DB9 for sports car racing in the form of the DBR9 and the DBRS9 for the FIA GT1 and the FIA GT3, respectively. These cars are extensively modified DB9 models adapted for motorsport. The interior features were removed, and the aluminium body panels were replaced by carbon fiber panels. The engine was modified in both cars to produce more horsepower and torque. Table of Contents Section 1. Name Section 2. Background. Section 3. Development. Section 4. Design and Technology. Section 5. Updates. Section 6. Variants. Section 6.1. DB9 Volante. Section 6.2. DB9 LM. Section 6.3. DB9 GT. Section 7. Discontinuation. Section 8. Motorsport. Section 8.1. DBR9. Section 8.2, DBRS9. Section 9, Reception. Section 1, Name. The letters DB are the initials of David Brown, the owner of Aston Martin between 1947 and 1972. Although the DB9 succeeded the DB7, Aston Martin did not name the car DB8 due to fears that the name would suggest that it featured a V8 engine. The DB9 has a V12. Reports indicated that Aston Martin held the belief that naming the car DB8 would suggest a progressive evolution, given that the DB9 marked the introduction of an entirely new vehicle. Section 2. Background In 1994, Aston Martin, which Ford Motor Company owned at the time, began producing the DB7, a Grand Tourer positioned as an entry-level vehicle. It was the only Aston Martin that incorporated a steel monocoque construction, which was designed by Jaguar a company that Ford also owned at the time. Designed by Ian Callum, the DB7 was available as both a coupe and convertible, the latter known as the Volante. In 1999, Aston Martin began manufacturing the DB7 Vantage, which featured a V12 engine developed by Ford in the United States. It became so popular that it started diverting sales from the six-cylinder model, leading to the latter's discontinuation later that year. The DB7 remained in production until 2004, when Aston Martin had produced about 7,000 examples. It was the best-selling Aston Martin of its time, though it was eventually surpassed by subsequent models. In the latter part of the 1990s, Aston Martin established a model plan where the cars would introduce various new technologies. Ford invested heavily in producing an improved engine and structural technology to create an all-new platform. This helped reintroduce Aston Martin's status as a more desirable automaker. The first of this new era of cars was the Vanquish, introduced in 2001 to replace the Virage. Following the rejection of previous product proposals, the replacement for the DB7 was announced as the DB9. This platform, namely the vertical horizontal, would underpin every Aston Martin produced between 2003 and 2016. Section 3. Development. This section begins with a block quote from Ian Callum. Quote, we started working on this after we did a V8 mid-engined car, which was the AM305 concept. I worked on that car at TWR with a small V8 in the back. 
Then Ulrich Bez took over the company at this point, and he didn't want a mid-engined car. He said Astons have to be front-engined. He obviously had an engineering strategy as well, where he could use the front end of the big car on the smaller one, but I disagreed with him and said that it could be a mid-engined car. And he had the view that British cars should never be mid-engined. End quote. Section begins. In July 2000, Ford appointed Ulrich Bez as Chief Executive Officer and Chairman of Aston Martin. The entry-level DB7 was due to be replaced by a car with the project codename AM802, slated to be a 2 plus 2 grand touring car. During this time, a third project was in development, codenamed the AM305. It was to be a smaller, two-seater car intended to compete with the Porsche 911 and the Ferrari 360. This car became the Vantage in 2005. Callum was appointed as the lead designer for the AM802 project. With the abrupt death of the designer Jeff Lawson in 1999, Callum had to alternate between designing at Jaguar and Aston Martin. Between 2000 and 2001, Bez requested that he work on two cars, the DB9 and what would become the V8 Vantage in 2005. Much of this was at the Jaguar Design Center in Whitley. When Aston Martin appointed Henrik Fisker as the lead designer in 2001, it allowed Callum to focus principally on Jaguar. Although the DB9 was completed by Fisker, the basic shape was done by Callum. When asked by the magazine Car and Driver how much he had contributed to the vehicle, Callum replied, quote, I would say pretty much 100%, including the interior. Maybe not the color and trim and wood finishes, but certainly the surfaces of the car, end quote. Numerous DB9 pre-production prototypes and concepts were tested over various locations globally, amassing over 1 million miles, 1,600,000 kilometers, collectively. Aston Martin conducted testing at the Ford Lommel Proving Grounds in Belgium, as well as high-speed testing at the Nardo Ring in Italy, the Nürburgring in Germany, the Mira Test Track, and the Millbrook Proving Ground, the latter two in the United Kingdom. Aston Martin subjected vehicles to hot weather trials in Death Valley, the world's hottest location, and cold weather evaluations within Sweden's Arctic Circle. Further tests occurred in New Zealand, encompassing both summer and winter conditions. Aston Martin deliberately destroyed most of the cars, but three were retained and appeared in the 2006 film Casino Royale. Following their cinematic appearances, all three vehicles were rendered undrivable. The car debuted in September 2003 at the Frankfurt Motor Show. The official series manufacturer of the DB9 Coupe began in January 2004 at the Gaydon facility in Warwickshire, England, marking the first model built there. In a 2007 interview, Bess stated that, though Aston Martin was traditionally a maker of more exclusive automobiles, he believed that the company needed to be more visible and build more cars. At launch, Aston Martin planned to produce between 1,400 and 1,500 examples annually. Section 4. Design and Technology as opposed to its predecessor that featured a steel monocoque construction, the DB9's vertical horizontal platform employs extensive use of aluminium. The body structure comprises aluminium and composite materials melded together by mechanically fixed self-piercing rivets and robotic-assisted adhesive bonding techniques. The bonded aluminium structure possesses more than double the torsional rigidity of its predecessor despite being 25% lighter. The DB9 also has anti-roll bars and double wishbone suspension supported by coil springs. The rear suspension incorporates additional anti-squat and anti-lift technology to control heavy acceleration or braking. While DB9's exterior skin mostly consists of aluminium, the front bumpers and bonnet are made of composite materials. The DB9's platform is also used by the Rapide, DBS, Vantage, Farage, 2012 Vanquish, and the Lagonda Taraf. From the outset, Aston Martin intended for the front passenger cabin of the DB9 to incorporate a spacious, comfortable two-seater design. The rear passenger cabin was to be used more commonly as stowage space. The car's interior design was inspired by the 2001 Vanquishes, but there were many alterations to differentiate the cars. The air vents were mounted lower, leaving space for the pop-up satellite navigation positioned above. The switchgear layout differed, except for a row of five round controls positioned approximately level with the steering wheel. Instead of the Vanquish's red starter button, which was often described as vulgar, Aston Martin opted for a clear glass button engraved with the brand's name, which illuminated blue when the ignition was on and red during engine operation. The DB9's interior is upholstered in leather and has a walnut wood trim. 
Satellite navigation and Bluetooth were initially optional, but became standard in later models. Later models also offered a Dolby ProLogic sound system connectable to satellite radio, a 6-CD changer, an iPod connector, a USB connector, or an auxiliary input jack. The coupe comes standard with two front seats and rear seats. A seating package, which removes the back seats and replaces the front seats with lighter seats made of Kevlar and carbon fiber, was available, deducting 17 kilograms, 37 pounds. The boot capacity is 187 liters, 6.6 .6 cubic feet, in the coupe, or 136 liters, 4.8 cubic feet, in the Volante. The Aston Martin DB9 uses a 5.9 liter V12 engine. This generates 570 newton meters, 420 pound feet of torque at 5,000 RPM and a maximum power output of 456 Pferdestarke, 335 kilowatts, 450 horsepower at 6,000 RPM. The DB9 can accelerate from 0 to 97 kilometers per hour, 60 miles per hour, in 4.7 seconds and has a top speed of 299 kilometers per hour, 186 miles per hour. Its front mid-engine engine design improves weight distribution. The DB9 could be equipped with either a six-speed conventional manual gearbox manufactured by Graziano Transmissioni or a six-speed ZF Friedrichshafen Touchtronic automatic gearbox featuring paddle-operated semi-automatic mode. The automatic gearbox increases the 0 to 97 km per hour, 60 miles per hour, acceleration time to 4.9 seconds, though the top speed remains the same. The gearbox is rear-mounted and is driven by a carbon fiber tail shaft inside a cast aluminum torque tube. The DB9 launched with 483mm 19-inch wheels, with the front ones measuring 216mm 8.5 inches in width and the rear ones at 241mm 9.5 inches. Featuring Bridgestone Potenza 235-40ZR19 tires in the front and 275-35ZR19 in the rear, the car's braking system relies on Brembo 4-piston calipers. This section contains two images. Image 1, with the caption, Rear 3 quarter View. Image 2, with the caption, Interior. Section 5, Updates. In 2008, Aston Martin implemented a facelift for the DB9. The car was largely unchanged. The updates included stylistic tweaks such as door mirrors resembling those of the DBS model, revised wheels, and a grille with new elements integrated into its traditional design. The DB9's 5.9 liter V12 received an increase of 20 horsepower, 15 kilowatts, and 31 newton meters, 23 pound feet, achieved by increased compression and a deeper sump, reducing friction as the crankshaft moves through its oil bath. The car's maximum speed was raised to 306 km per hour, 190 miles per hour, achieving a 0 to 97 km per hour, 60 miles per hour acceleration in 4.6 seconds. The car also received a revised Touchtronic 2 gearbox with an electronic shift by wire control system. In June 2010, Aston Martin implemented another facelift for the DB9. Adjusted by Merrick Reichman, the updates involved a refreshed front bumper clear taillights, and more defined wings. A smoother body contour decorates the door sills, extending from the updated front fascia to the rear wings. Aston Martin updated the DB9's Bluetooth system, implemented a tire pressure monitoring system, and included a new double apex aluminum trim finish. Buyers could upgrade to a Bang & Olufsen stereo sound system. About revising the styling of the DB9, Reichman quoted that, quote, the beauty of an Aston Martin comes from harmonious proportions, a ground-hugging stance, taut surfacing, and a complete and thorough attention to detail. The DB9 epitomizes these qualities. It is beautiful, but subtle, not attention-seeking." In October 2012, Aston Martin unveiled the most substantial facelift of the DB9, which marked the end of the brief tenure of the second-generation Virage. Designed by Reichman, the facelifted DB9's most prominent changes lie in its exterior. Aston Martin made significant changes to the bodywork by adapting design cues from the Virage, such as enlarging the recessed headlight clusters with bi-xenon lights and LED daytime running strips, implementing a new 5-bar grille, and integrating a new rear spoiler with the boot lid. The upgraded V12 increased its power output to 517 Ferdistarka, 380 kilowatts, 510 horsepower, and torque to 620 newton meters, 457 pound-feet. 
The car's 0 to 97 kilometers per hour, 60 miles per hour acceleration time decreased to 4.5 seconds, and the top speed stood at 295 kilometers per hour, 183 miles per hour. Aston Martin also introduced three driving modes normal, suitable for daily driving, sport, offering enhanced precision at the expense of comfort, and track, intensifying the characteristics of the sport mode. The car's final update, the DB9 GT, increased its power output to 547 Pferdestarke, 402 kilowatts, 540 horsepower. This section contains two images. The first, with the caption, in 2010, the DB9 received clear glass taillights. The second, with the caption, front and rear of the 2013 DB9. Section 6, Variants. Section 6.1, DB9 Volante. At the Detroit Auto Show in January 2004, Aston Martin unveiled the DB9 Volante convertible. Manufacture began in February 2005. In case of a rollover incident, the Volante features reinforced windshield pillars and two deployable hoops behind the rear seats. These hoops remain active at all times and, if triggered, will shatter the car's rear window. Aston Martin has adjusted the Volante suspension system for smoother cruising by softening the springs and reducing the weight of the anti-roll bars, resulting in a more gentle suspension. The convertible top of the Volante is crafted from folding fabric. It opens in 17 seconds. The Volante weighs 1,882 kilograms, 4,150 pounds, slightly heavier than its coupe counterpart. The coupe and Volante variants share the semi-automatic and automatic gearboxes along with the engine. Initially, the car's speed was limited to 266 km per hour, 165 miles per hour, to retain the roof's integrity, but Aston Martin removed this limitation starting with the upgraded 2007 model. Like the coupe, the original Volante has 570 newton meters, 420 pound feet of torque at 5,000 RPM, and a maximum power of 456 Pferdestarke, 335 kilowatts, 450 horsepower, at 6,000 RPM. 0 to 97 km per hour, 60 miles per hour, takes 4.9 seconds due to the additional weight. In 2008, the Volante's output increased to 477 Pferdestarke, 351 kilowatts, 470 horsepower, and 600 newton meters, 443 pound feet. And in 2012, outputs increased to 517 Pferdestarke, 380 kilowatts, 510 horsepower, and 620 newton meters, 457 pound feet and its curb weight was reduced to 1,815 kilograms, 4,001 pounds. This section contains one image, with the caption, Aston Martin DB9 Volante, 2005. Section 6.2 To commemorate Aston Martin's triumph in the GT1 category at the 2007 24 Hours of Le Mans, Aston Martin launched the DB9 LM Le Mans in early 2008. This special edition includes the DB9's optional sports pack as standard and is exclusively available in the coupe body style with automatic transmission. It was only available in the Sartre silver exterior color, named after the Circuit de la Sartre where the Le Mans takes place. It features red brake calipers, a chrome mesh grille, and a bespoke black leather interior with red stitching, featuring the Le Mans track intricately stitched onto the central console. The car has clear glass rear lights borrowed from its descendant, the DBS. Aston Martin initially intended for a production run of 124 units, each allocated to a different dealer. However, some dealers opted out of their allocations, leading to 69 cars being produced. Section 6.3 DB9 GT In 2015, Aston Martin unveiled the final iteration of the DB9, named the DB9 GT. The engine possesses a power output of 547 Pferdestarke, 402 kilowatts, 540 horsepower, at 6,750 RPM, and 620 newton meters, 457 pound-feet of torque, at 5,500 RPM. It accelerates from 0 to 97 kilometers per hour, 60 miles per hour, in 4.4 seconds, from 0 to 161 kilometers per hour, 100 miles per hour, in 10.2 seconds, and can run the quarter mile in 12.8 seconds. Its top speed remains unchanged at 295 kilometers per hour, 183 miles per hour. This section contains one image with the caption, 2015 Aston Martin DB9 GT. Section 7, Discontinuation. In 2015, Aston Martin announced that the DB9 successor would be named DB11, 
The upcoming model range, which the DB11 was a part of, was to introduce a refreshed design approach directed by Reichman. Insider reports indicated that this model range aimed to address critiques of the existing lineup by emphasizing distinctive differences among the models, aligning them more closely with the well-known Italian automaker Ferrari. On 22 July 2016, Aston Martin posted a picture on Twitter of the final nine DB9s, dubbed the last of nine, produced, all of which were painted dark gray. On 27 July 2016, these last nine units had their final inspection before rolling off the production line later that day, marking the end of a 12-year manufacture during which about 16,500 units were manufactured. Section 8. Motorsport. Section 8.1. DBR9. The DB9 has been adapted for use in sports car racing by Aston Martin Racing, AMR, a collaboration between Aston Martin and ProDrive. The DBR9, developed to follow FIA GT1 regulations, debuted in 2005. AMR replaced most of the car's aluminum body panels with carbon fiber panels, and several external features, like a front splitter and a rear wing, have been added to increase the car's downforce. AMR upgraded the brakes to lightweight Brembo discs and six piston calipers. The transmission in the DBR9 is an X-Track six-speed sequential manual mounted at the rear axle. The engine modifications allow it to have a power output of 634 Ferdestarka, 466 kilowatts, 625 horsepower. The increase in engine power and weight reduction allowed the DBR9 to accelerate from 0 to 97 kilometers per hour, 60 miles per hour, in 3.4 seconds, and 0 to 161 kilometers per hour, 100 miles per hour, in 6.4 seconds. The DBR9 won in its debut at the 2005 12 Hours of Sebring and has since secured victories in various other events, including the 24 Hours of Le Mans. This section contains one image, with the caption, Aston Martin DBR9. Section 8.2 DBRS9. AMR developed a variant of the DBR9 to follow FIA GT3 regulations. The DBRS9 shares its carbon fiber bodywork, chassis, and suspension layout with the DBR9. While the engine is shared with the DBR9, it has been detuned and has a power output of 558 Ferdestarka, 410 kilowatts, 550 horsepower, and 620 newton meters, 457 pound feet of torque. The DBRS9 featured a six speed gearbox or a six speed sequential gearbox and has a 0 to 97 kilometers per hour, 60 miles per hour acceleration time of 3.4 seconds and a top speed of 314 kilometers per hour, 195 miles per hour. The DBRS9 competed in several endurance races and additionally raced in the FIA GT3 European Championship for which it was designed before being replaced by a GT3 version of the V12 Vantage in 2011. This section contains one image with the caption Aston Martin DBRS9. Section 9 Reception Car critics have generally lauded the DB9 Coupe and Volante, commending their opulent interior and exterior designs. The automotive show Top Gear held the DB9 in high regard, even giving it a special mention in its Cool Wall segment. The presenters called the DB9 too cool for the wall, however, and it earned its own category dubbed the DB9 Fridge, likened to a mini refrigerator containing the car's card. While reviewing the Volante, Richard Hammond called the interior of the DB9, quote, one of the best known to man, end quote, although he found the car to be less rigid than the coupe, leading to a somewhat wobbly experience. The car reviewers Edmonds and the magazine Road and Track criticized the DB9 for having poorer handling than its competitors, noting that the car is not firm enough. Nonetheless, Edmonds acknowledged that while the Mercedes-Benz SL600 and SL55 AMG were objectively better cars, the DB9 was more desirable, and direct comparisons with faster cars like the Porsche 911 Turbo S Cabriolet and the Ford GT, the DB9 was ranked poorly. The car and driver reviewer noted that comparing it against faster cars, quote, highlighted its shortcomings, end quote. Similarly, compared to the Bentley Continental GT, Mercedes-Benz CL600, and the Ferrari 612 Scaglietti F1, the DB9 ranked poorly again. The reviewer said that, quote, despite its problems, the DB9 would be their personal choice, end quote. The stiffness issues were largely rectified in later iterations of the DB9, as observed by the magazine Auto Week. The DB9's interior has been called dazzling, with Edmonds saying, quote, words like rich and crafted just don't cut it. 
though decadent and sculpted by the Almighty himself, get close, end quote. Reviewers complained about the back seats, with the magazine Forbes stating that they, quote, thought of it more as a padded parcel shelf, end quote. Likewise, reviewers complained that the space for cargo was limited, though many quipped the small back seats could help hold luggage. Another common complaint was the car's poor satellite navigation system, which the magazine Automobile described as the Achilles heel, noting that, quote, selecting a route is painful at best, end quote. Newer models contain a revised satellite navigation system sourced from Garmin. There are references available in the written form of this article. Please be sure to verify information found on Wikipedia using the references provided or by cross-referencing the information yourself. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International License, available at creativecommons.org slash licenses slash buy hyphen sa slash 4.0.